Hi, Joe Carrig with the Carrig Real Estate Team, and this is your San Ramon Valley update for the week of October 17th. This week, we're going to look at the interest rates and the increasing interest rates and how that's affecting the real estate market and how you can still take advantage of this market, whether you're a buyer or a seller. You know, first off, let's look at our first slide. You know, you maybe have heard this before, marry the house, but date the rate. And people go, well, what does that mean? Well, it means what happens is you marry the house, you buy the house of your dreams. It's like when you get married, you plan on it for being long term. But when you date, you sometimes it lasts a week and sometimes it lasts a year. So you marry the house, but you date the rate. So in other words, you don't have to go out there and get a fixed rate mortgage for seven plus percent. You can get a three, a five year, a seven year fixed rate at a lower interest rate because it really doesn't matter. Or you can get the rate bought down for a couple years and lower the rate. Because what happens, what's happening now is because of inflation, the government's pushing us into a recession. And so what happens though, when they decide after a couple years that they've tamed down the inflation a little bit, then they'll lower the interest rates back down to pull us out of a recession. So if you're a buyer, marry the house, but just date the rate. Get something for a couple years, knowing that you're gonna be able to refinance at a lower rate. Having said that, I don't think we're ever, well, I can't say ever, but I don't think we're gonna see two and a half, three percent interest rates. But definitely instead of seven, six and a half or seven, you know, we're maybe gonna see, you know, four, four and a half, five, which is still an outstanding rate as you'll see down the line. So the main problem what we're dealing with is, is the inflation. Unfortunately, you know, the people in Washington that, you know, the Federal Reserve is they're standing back and for a long time they basically said, you know, what inflation? It was, it was the 6,000 pound elephant in the room that, you know, they kept feeding. And the way they keep feeding it is they basically, you know, kept printing money. And that's what they do. And that's why you'll see, like in this diagram, the Fed is coming up so short on inflation because they keep raising the interest rates. You know, early November, they're talking about a potentially uh, for the third month in a row, another three quarter point raise in the interest rates, which is, it, it is a starting to affect the real estate market. You know, we went through the correction and the market settled down, but it's, stable but a little stagnant right now because of the interest rate and the uncertainty with the buyer and we'll show you during today how that affects your monthly payment but so what's the problem and you know why is the fed coming up short well because the federal reserve is not doing what it really takes to tame the inflation think of it like a boat you know you have a leak in your boat and so what they do is they start bailing out the water out of the boat and so it's not working, the boat is still sinking, so they just get a bigger bucket and a bigger bucket and a bigger bucket. They keep raising the interest rates, but what they're not doing is they're not fixing the leak in the boat. And the leak in the boat is the printing of the money. Literally in the last few years, our government has printed more money than they had in the entire history of the United States, just in the last three years or so. So when you print that much money, you're devaluating the money and obviously making everything more expensive as we're seeing in, in the market. But we're gonna go through today and say why it's still a good time to buy, why it's a good, still a good time to, to sell your home. You know, you'll see the mortgage rates rose for the sixth consecutive week and expect them still to go up a little bit more. You know, again, the Fed's probably gonna raise another three quarter percent in November and they'll probably eat up a little bit, but anticipate that this could start slowing down after this next one. And the reason why is it's, inflation is still out there. Certainly in the housing market, they've tamed the inflation down, but in everything else, they, they haven't. And it's, and it's for a lot of different reasons, and we're not gonna get into all the different reasons why gas is so expensive and everything else, but the overwhelming thing is the fact that the more money you have out there, the less it's gonna be worth and the more everything's gonna cost, which is fine if everyone's income kept up with inflation, but it's not, and it's really hurting the middle class. So expect it to go up a little bit more, but here's why I think it's gonna to tone down a little bit, 
is because what's really starting to affect Wall Street and it's really starting to affect the financial markets. And so let's face it, you know, you got Yellen and you got Powell, you got all the old Federal Reserves and who usually pays them $10 million a year after they leave the Federal Reserve? Well, it's Wall Street. So there's this incestuous relationship between Wall Street and the Federal Reserve. And right now it's starting to hit them in their pocketbook. So there's a lot of pressure from the financial institutions to, hey, you know what, you're overstepping because the whole idea is to raise the interest rates to have a soft landing. Well, we've kind of had a crash landing in the economy. So right now they are definitely crashing the economy with the continual raising of the interest rates because it's not really helping the inflation. So at some point they're gonna have to sit there and go, all right, we have to just deal with the inflation some, some way else because the quick fix was raising the interest rates, it's not working. So they're gonna have to decide that they're gonna have to quit printing money if they wanna deal with the inflation. So the last six weeks, we've seen interest rates go up, and again, they're gonna to continue to go up for a little bit longer. I like what the chief economist for Realtor.com says, there's no doubt that the increase in mortgage rate will make home buying even more challenging. Buyers may still find opportunities as these changes coincide with the time of year when buyers have historically found the best market conditions to obtain more bargaining power. So what that basically means is the fact that as rates go up, prices settle down, more inventory builds up, and there's better buys for buyers out there. Now understand, this is not 2008. We're not gonna see a crash of the real estate market. There's nothing out there. If you basically, if I went away for three years and came back to the market right now, and I looked at the homes that are on the market, I would tell you it's actually maybe even a seller's market. Things are taking 30 to 60 days on average to sell. And, and now we have maybe four times as much inventory. I'll give you a perfect example of kind of where we are historically. So let's take Blackhawk. Well, during 2008, there were 200 homes on the market in Blackhawk. One out of every 10 homes in Blackhawk was on the market. So anytime over the last 20 years, if we basically drop below 50 homes, we would sit there and say, oh my God, there's no inventory. Well, earlier this year, we were down to four or five active homes, only four or five active homes in Blackhawk. Now there's like 20, 22, and people go, oh my God, it's gone up like four to five times. Yeah, it has, except historically, there's less than half the amount of homes that would be on the market where we would sit there and go, oh geez, inventory is a little bit low. So home selling in 30 to 60 days, and with the inventories where they are, it's actually leaning more towards a seller's market. But obviously, you know, you look at the next slide, the effect of rising rates on, on mortgage payments, it does make a difference. This is an example of a $900,000 home where someone put $20,000 down, so they're just borrowing 700,000. As we know, the average loan out here in a lot of cases is twice this. But you can see at 3%, the yellow bar, you know, the payment's are around $4,000, but at 7% where they're at now, they're almost 6,000. So they basically, you know, have gone up from 4,000, they've gone up 50% from about 4,000 to $6,000 a month. And that is just for a 700 and some odd thousand dollar loan. You times that by two, and people are paying three, four, five thousand, six thousand dollars $6,000 more a month, you know, for the same loan that they would have gotten just a couple years ago or just even the last, the last year. So again, the, buyer, the buying power from the buyers is so much lower that the prices have to settle down a little bit more. Having said that, all the indicators out there is the fact that inventory is staying pretty stable. It's not jumping up there. You know, as we talked about before, you can see that, but the rates overall, when you look at going back to 1971, are still historically low. When I got into the real estate 45 years ago in 1978, the first home I purchased, my interest rate was 18%. And that's because the builder bought it down a couple percent. It was actually closer to 20%. So you can see that, you know, going back into the early 80s, interest rates were 15, 16%. The dot-com bubble, you know, in the 2000 or so, late 1990s, was 8.52. During the, the housing bubble 
of 2008, the interest rates were 6.72. Now they're 6.92. So basically, they're about the same as the housing bubble. The big difference is the fact that there were like 2 million new homes on the market in 2008. It was an oversupply. We are still dealing with an undersupply. That's why you'll see that the prices stay about the same. Here's Mark Fleming, the chief economist for First American, why mortgage rates are expected to continue to drift higher over the coming months. Much of the rapid increase in rates is likely behind us, like we talked about. Nationally, why month um, over month house prices may decline, annual house prices declines are not expected. Given the ongoing supply and demand imbalance, and continue strength in the labor market. So what is a problem for someone is an opportunity for other people. Because one thing you always have to remember, and you've seen this slide with me before, is in four of the, I've, this is the seventh recession I've sold in, in four of the last six recessions, literally prices have gone up. And in 1991, they stayed about the same. It was only during 2008 where there was an oversupply. Why, why is that for? Well, the reason why is because housing is the best hedge against inflation. As prices go up, if you took a, a, a $1,000 and you put it in the bank, next year with inflation, it's gonna be worth 900. Then another you know, 10% after that, it's gonna be worth you know, 810 and then 730. So in a couple years, it's depreciated down 20, 30 percent, where home prices, as you can see with this chart, will probably continue year over year. Yes, we've gone through a little correction. Things have settled down. But year over year, if we're looking at this a year from now, I can tell you pretty certain that prices are probably going to stay the same or maybe gone up a little bit. So that's why you should be a, a buyer, because if you buy now and interest rates go up a little bit, the savings that you're going to have the interest rates, plus you have your asset in something that's keeping pace with inflation. And then look at the, the home forecast. This is basically from uh, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, the Mortgage Bankers Association, uh, NAR, and Zellman. And there's only one of those six that feels home prices are going to go down. The average still shows it going up 2%. Now, now Zellman, I think that they're, they're way off when they say they're going to go down another 4%. But overall, you know, for the most part, if you take all the average, it still shows the real estate market, you know, going up, prices going up. And you look at the number of analysis forecasts and the levels of price change. Look at, you know, all of them that are expecting more than 10 percent, 5 to 10 percent, 3 to 5 percent, and 1 to 3 percent, and then less than 1 percent comparatively to the, to the uh, um, uh, analysis that are feeling that the market's going to go down overwhelmingly, they feel that the market's going to continue to go up. Why? Because these economists realize that when you have inflation, because I will tell you, the inflation's not going to go away because the government can't figure out how to quit printing money. So inflation is going to be with us. The Federal Reserve is going to finally figure out that, hey, these higher interest rates are tanking the economy. They're not helping with, with inflation. They're going to have to figure out something else. But again, that's going to take a while because the habits are just to spend, you know, just to print money when you need it. They have to get out of that habit like President Clinton did in the 1990s, where he actually ended up having a balanced, balanced budget. So real estate is still going to be the best hedge against what we're going to. You can see the forecast through 2024 and 2026, the percentage of analysts that think it's going to market's going to appreciate rather than depreciate. 86%, 91%, and over 96% of the analysts feels that the market's going to continue to, to go up. So let's look at the graphs for this week, and you'll see exactly what I mean when I'm talking about the market, you know, somewhat stabilizing. We had the correction where, for the most part, there were twice as many pending properties as active. And then literally we went through that 10 to 15 to 20% correction where it completely reversed, where now there was twice as many actives as pending properties. Well, look, you see what's happening. You know, in the San Ramon Valley, you'll see that actually in the San Ramon market, you'll actually see that inventory is continuing to go down and pending properties are staying somewhat stable. Average time on the market, around 30 days. The Danville market, very similar. You sit there and look at 
active properties are staying the same or actually going down. Pending properties are edging up. Average time on the market around 30 days. The Blackhawk market, same thing. You know, the, the, this is what you look at when you see a stable market where active properties stay about the same, uh, pending properties stay about the same, and in every market, same thing with Alamo. Look at that. There is no big shifts. There is no big shifts of pending properties going way down and active properties going way up, which is everything comes down to supply and demand. We still have a lack of supply on the market. Right now, we just have a little less demand on the market. So as soon as people realize, okay, these interest rates are going to be with us for a while, and, I'm, and if I don't own a house, if I don't own real estate, I'm, that freight train is picking up steam and I've got to jump on at some point, you know, so I have a hedge against inflation. And also, if you currently have a house and you've been wanting to make that move, it might be a good time to at least to look at it. Dublin, same thing. Look at the active properties going down a little bit, pending properties going up a little bit. And when you look at the sold price to list price percentages, you know, everything like every week has been from 95 to 100%. Having said that, I will tell you, we're still seeing a lot of price reductions. And so if a $2 million home gets reduced to 1.8 and closes at 1.8, it's going to show that sold for 100% of value. But yet at the same time, you know, really it only sold at 90%. So these numbers are really more like about 90%, which is still good. I mean, if a home's listed or worth $2 million, it's going to sell for about $1.8 million or so, $1.8, $1.85. So, I will tell you, it's a, it's a confusing market going in because on one end you have interest rates going up, which are raising the payments. But on the other end, you know, we had the correction in the market, but we're staying, prices stay fairly stable. So if you're a buyer, this is a great opportunity to take advantage of it, get into a rate just for a couple years, you know, marry the house, date the rate, get into it for just a couple years, and then you're going to be able to refinance at a couple percent less in a couple years down the road. If you're a seller, yes, you know, if you had plans, you just don't sell to sell, but if your plans were potentially to sell the home in the next year or two, yes, give us a call, sit down with us, we'll work out a plan to see if it makes sense. Because if you have 50% of the people that feel that the market is gonna stay about the same, like I do, if you have 40% of the people feel it's gonna go down, and then you have 10% of the people feeling that the market is going to go up, well, you have 90% chance that it's going to stay the same or maybe go down a little bit. That's a feeling out there from, from, the, from the people. But again, look at what the economists are saying. Look what the analysts are saying. Look at the, the last six recessions we've had. It proves that real estate is still the best hedge against inflation. So for any questions, give us a call. Again, Joe Carrig, the Carrig Real Estate Team, 925-487. 6838 or drop me an email joe at caregteam.com or visit our website www.caregteam.com just so you can see all of our listings learn a little bit more about us and reach out we're always here for you we'll see you next week